and everyone. Today is the the eighth of December, twenty twenty two, and we are continuing our lectures on Nigerian petroleum law. Today we will look at unitization or joint development of petroleum reserves. And we will also look at the legal regime for frontier accredited. Is that okay? Yes. Uh, so please, let's do the front seats. I don't want to talk and uh, use my voice. And, uh, those two of you at the back, come to the front. And uh, two of you come to the front here. Yeah. Those two of yes, those young men. I think three can stay in the seat. Yes, so let's fill the first two seats, please. Let's fill the first two seats, please. <coughs>
So let's assume 60%, this is the conception, and 60, this is the, the reservoir, 60% of it is here. But you can see that this one is bigger than this one. Is that also? And 40% is here. They may enter into an agreement to say, okay, you will take 60% of the profits and we will take what 40%. But the whole idea is to reach an amicable settlement of amicable approach to the development of this development. So in a nutshell, that is what unitization is all about. Tarila, are you with me? Yes. Yes, that's where a conception struggles more than one boundary. Where a reservoir struggles more than one boundary, we will call upon both parties to develop it as one. So let me just read what I have here as my introduction. Please listen. Hydrocarbon, hydrocarbon accumulations may sometimes straddle two or more concession areas or international boundaries. Two or more concession areas or international boundaries. So particularly for uh, maritime countries, maritime countries, a two maritime countries will have boundaries. Is that not so? Yes, yeah, so Norway and the UK, these are maritime boundaries in the world, in what we call the Northeast. Nigeria has a maritime boundary with the uh, Sao Tome and Principe, where these countries are, are neighbors. And country A is exploring for petroleum offshore, and country B is exploring for petroleum offshore, and they now discover that your concession has, and uh, they now discover that the reservoir struggles these two boundaries. Are you with me? In order to avoid war, then they could enter into the intervention agreement. Otherwise, it will not lead to boundary war disputes. To lead to boundary disputes, but these disputes can go on for 100 years. Uh, in what we call the Mediterranean, for example, they have a lot of natural gas there, but they've had a lot of issues. I want you to look up, those of you who, you people that don't like to read, now you can't read by force. Look up the disputes, right? Disputes between Israel, Israel, Lebanon, Israel and Lebanon, basically, look up the uh, maritime disputes between Israel and Lebanon as far as natural gas resources is concerned. So just go up, read it. When we come in the next class, I want to hear uh, from you. Uh, what is your name, my son? Eh? God's gift. Or oh, God's gift. No S. God gift. Are you an APA man? From where? You look like an APA man. <laughs> so you are the one to read that in. And when you come, when we come, I want to hear from you. And don't come and tell me rubbish. Read it very well. Are you hearing me? Uh -huh. I want to hear. Tell me when did this dispute start? What solutions have they been able to effect between those two countries? Where are we now? You know, how sustainable... You're not writing. Eh? You are, other people are writing, you are looking. <laughs> Look at the history of the dispute. Look at the solutions that have been preferred. How sustainable is that solution? And of course, I want you to give me the historical uh, hostilities. You have to... You cannot explain this cannot solve this problem without looking at the historical hostilities between Israel and uh, Lebanon. You will give us a presentation, 10 minutes. I will score you. I will score you as part of your continuous assessment. That's my daughter in the middle. What is your name again? Blessing? Yes. Grace. Grace. I know it's one of those. Uh, <laughs> Grace, blessing, joy. You will look up the issue of Indonesia and East Timor. East Timor. Timor is T I M O R. T 
Timo is T I M O R O. East Timo. Is that okay? Yes, so you also look at the historical perspective, what solutions have been put forward, and uh, all that. Is that's Indonesia? Yes. No, Australia. Australia, please. For you, I have some articles that I'll give you that will help you. Is that okay? Yes. Remind me, and then I'll send it to you online. But this is my son, and God gives, he has to go to the, uh, to the news. Uh, there's a lot of information out there. So basically, uh, when it happens like that, for this, my daughter, what's your name again? Daria. Daria. Spell it. D-A-R-A. Okay, you look serious. That is my impression of you. It's a good impression. I hope I'm right. You look like a girl who knows where you are going to. You don't look confused. It's a good one. You will look at the uh, Nigerian Sao Tome and Principe. Sao Tome. Sao Tome and Principe. Nigeria, on the one hand, on the other hand, Sao Tome, S-A-O, T-O-M-E. Sao Tome is about 15 meters, 15 minutes away from Bayasa, by, by air. Not far. Peru, are you with me? Taila, are you with me? Yes, sir. That's why I like calling Peru. Sao Tome, they are not far from here. So, some years ago, it was discovered that Nigeria and Sao Tome, because we are the boundary neighbors, maritime neighbors, Petroleum straddled between our boundaries. I don't know if you understand. And uh, do we allow this country to be producing it individually? We may have issues. So Nigeria and South Korea came together to sign an agreement called the GD, Joint Development Agreement. And we designated that area where this petroleum straddled to two countries' boundaries as a GDZ, Joint Development Zone. So, Dara, you will look at it, you will trace the history, and you tell us what is the position currently. I know Chevron was given uh, the operatorship over that concession. Give us a, uh, an overview and all that. Is that okay, my young people? Yes, sir. Good. So I come back again. So, so hydrocarbon accumulations may sometimes straddle two or more concession areas or international boundaries. And I said where that is so, particularly for where that is so the, for the purpose of peace and uh, sustainability and maximization of economic uh, recovery, the countries or the concession owners uh, will come together and enter into this agreement. So unitization is a process, I'll just read for purpose of recording. Uh, you people have not been asking for my slides. Uh, you, you, uh, Professor Eva has to be reminding me. Yes, I heard it full. Uh, Utilization is a process whereby petroleum reservoirs, in bracket fields, which straddle concession boundaries, are developed and exploited as a unit using a single operator, who is called a unit operator, and common production facilities under a signed agreement called the Utilization Agreement by the holders of the respective concessions. It enables the exploitation as a single unit of oil and gas deposits in fields and reservoirs that are straddling two or more parties' mutual concession boundaries under a single authority, notwithstanding that the respective permits or contract areas are granted under different contractual terms. I hope it's clear enough. Yes, yeah, so what are, why, what are the benefits? What? The main objective, like I said, is to maximize economic recovery of producible hydrocarbon. And we'll, I will run through some of the merits or advantages. Grace, are you with me? Yes. It prevents disputes which could potentially hinder efficient exploitation. It enables sharing economies of scale. It enables 
economies of scale ensures use of ensures best use both of you both of you leave my class it's okay my dear ensures best use of technical information means and equipment it reduces rational or rationalizes cost and investment in order to optimally develop fields as a single unit. It prevents inefficient utilization of resources and challenges of developing strategic fields are eliminated. Are you with me? Good. So, you know where, if we do not put this kind of measure in place, then everybody will be in a hurry to go and get his share. Is that not so? Is that not so? Because there will be strife, there will be competition. And that may not prove or augur well even for the government that has granted them this concession. So one of the things it does is to avoid unnecessary competitive and drilling. Now we'll just try and look at them. We'll come to challenges of challenges to unitization soon. Uh, let me do this for now. Okay, so now let's look at Nigeria first. Nigeria, the law of unitization as it concerns our beloved uh, country. Can I continue, please? Okay, so it is estimated that currently there are over, I'm just a background, over 70 fields or straddling fields in Nigeria, you know. But not up to five unitization agreements have been executed so far. So far. So we have about 70 fields that straddle. But we have less than five unitization agreements. Unitization is a new area, if I use that word, as far as Nigeria is concerned. It's not a, an area that has been tested robustly, but it's very important that you know about them because it's there in the Petroleum Act. It is also provided for in the drilling uh, regulation. So let's just briefly look at the regime first, the legal regime for. Uh, in the unitization of traveling fields. Number one, you want to go back in time to the Petroleum Drilling and Production Regulation of 1969, particularly Regulation 48. Then you want to look at the 2008 unitization guidelines that were issued by DPRO. And then you want to look at the Petroleum Industry Act. I take it again. The Green and Production Regulation of 1969, particularly Regulation 48, 2008 Unitization Guidelines issued by DPR, then, of course, DPR does not exist again. And lastly, the Petroleum Industry Act of 2021. So let me just run through what does the, um, what did the Green and Production Regulations provide for? Please look up. One of the things you will discover as you look at the Petroleum Industry Act is that most of what were contained, most of what were contained in the regulations in the past regime have now been brought to the body of the Act. That is why the Petroleum Act is decidedly wider than the, uh, I mean the PIA is wider than the um, Petroleum Act. My son, are you with me? Francis, is that not? Do you understand? So under the Petroleum Act, it just has 16 sections. Under the new PIA, we have 300 and something sections. So under the PIA, I'm under the Petroleum Act, we rely a lot on regulations. The advantage of relying on regulations is the, the, the advantage of flexibility. Kuro, is that not your name? Kuro? Yes. Do you understand? Yes, so the Minister of Petroleum is giving delegated authority from the National Assembly to issue these regulations, which have the force of law. But 
what they've done now is that most of what were contained in these regulations have been brought to the body of the act. I think it's not the best. One reason is because for you to now amend the PIA, you would have to go through a, a whole hog of regulatory uh, amendment process. You have to go back to the National Assembly. You have to pass first reading, second reading, third reading, and all that. You need to obtain the consent of the, the, the president. Is that not so? Is that not so? Yes. You'll have to assent, and that can take another 10 years, because the politicians can be fighting here and there. But if it was contained in, an, in, in regulations, all the Minister of Petroleum uh, will do is just to issue new regulations. You can wake up and change them. That is the advantage. So the speed, the minister is, is able to legislate in on real-time basis. I don't know if you understand. On real-time basis, as things change, he can simply issue regulations to adapt to the changes in society. You know, of course, there's a, there's a drawback to it, the disadvantage to it is that the Minister of Petroleum, being a politician, may be tempted, if he's not acting in good faith, to alter these laws uh, on any flimsy excuse. I don't even understand. Do you understand? Yes. And that could lead to uh, regulatory uncertainty. Regulatory uncertainty. If every year you are changing the regulations, then we have regulatory uncertainty. Is that not so? Is that not so? But when we have the law in an act, there's some form of stability because we know that we have the PIA before it will be amended, before key provisions will be amended, it will take some time. So anybody that is coming into the Nigerian industry will know that there's some form of regulatory stability. So those there are advantages and what disadvantages. You know, and so under the PIA, under the Petroleum Act regime, and uh, the provisions as far as unitization is concerned, we're containing the regulation, drilling and production regulations, under the new regime which is contained in the body of the Act. Are you with me so far? So I will run through uh, what we have under that uh, regime. If at any time during the term of a lease or license, the minister after consultation with the licensee or lessee is satisfied that the relevant area or any part thereof forms part of a single, single geological petroleum reservoir in respect of other parts of which any other license or lease is in force. That is number one. This place we have given to Francis and this place we have given to Godly, both of them form a single geological petroleum reservoir. That is the first condition. Secondly, and the minister is convinced that the field is susceptible to being developed as a unit. Are you with me? in accordance with good oil field practice. Number three, if he's also convinced that it is in the interest of Nigeria, Nigeria, comma, the grantee and the licenses or leases of any other part of the oil field, in order to secure, that is the fourth one, in order to secure the maximum ultimate recovery of petroleum, that the oil field should be worked and developed as a unit in cooperation by all those who, who hold the lease or license over any part. Then, paragraphs 2, 3, and 4 of this regulation shall apply. Are you with me? First, the minister may require the grantee to cooperate with the other parties in the preparation of a development scheme. That's the first thing, to develop a scheme for the working and development of the oil field as a unit by the grantee. Secondly, the parties shall jointly submit the scheme for the approval of the minister and all that. So that is the first thing that will happen. Once the Minister of Petroleum is aware that your field and parts of your field or your reservoir and my reservoir, they are actually one reservoir and uh, it, is in, it is in the best interest of this country and for optimal and purpose of recovery that it should be developed not as two different concessions but as one. Then it would require the parties to meet and come up with a scheme. A, plan, a scheme is a plan, is that not so? On how they intend to develop that concession as one. When they do that, if he approves of it, then the unit agreement will take force. And like I said, in that agreement, they will talk about who is going to and um, how much each person is going to bring what percentage of profit and all that. 
then the minister will approve. If he gives them time to come together and they fail to do that, then the minister himself will prepare the scheme by himself. Are you with me? So failure to submit the scheme within the specified period, the minister, the minister will prepare the scheme. Or if they submit a scheme that he is not comfortable with, then he will go ahead and prepare the scheme in a manner which in his opinion is fair and equitable. Is fair and equitable. My daughter, what are you looking for? Eh? Don't be entering this class when I'm teaching. Don't you know we have a lecture? Is that of course here? Don't be doing that this time. Is it okay? Good. Bless you. So it's straightforward enough. Tyler, is it straightforward enough? And what is not straight? Is that comfort? Yes, sir. <laughs> comfort, is it straightforward enough? Yes, sir. Are you sure? So in a nutshell, explain to me what, what this civilization is about, my daughter. Um, it's about there are two different contestations that are there for two friends. Yes. But in between, as in interlocking, or what should I say? Now, yes. Between them, there is one way or that is both in this contestation and Excellent. They will have to actually meet together. If it's for the betterment and the development of everything, they will have to do it together. That is just yes. the same thing. Same in nutshell. They just have to develop that particular web together. They don't have to do it one on one different. Okay. It's in the middle. It's just in between. Okay, my daughter. Thank you. Any other? Tyler, is it clear enough now? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. Good. So the Petroleum Industry Act contains similar provisions to the drilling and production regulation, it's just that it's a bit wider. I will try and look at the provisions of the PIA, Section 80. Section 80. So the first thing is that you must promptly notify, let's take a small note. Small note. Promptly notify the commission. Promptly notify the commission. So these are the oil companies. Promptly notify the commission of any reservoir that extends. Promptly notify the commission of any reservoir that extends beyond the boundaries of your license or lease area. Promptly notify the commission of any reservoir that extends beyond the boundaries of your concession area. First, so in order to ensure optimum recovery from that reservoir, the commission may require all petroleum operations relating to the commercial discovery to be carried out on the basis of a unitized development. So I'll just run through the conditions. Okay, you can look up now. Um, because of my time, that is why I don't like to give notes because you take all my time. And I want to cover so much in a short one. So you take, the, how many of you have been taking the audio? Yes, yeah, so I'm going to make you people walk. You will not play in my class. Are you with me? Yes. So my CA, I'm going to break the CA. There will be 5% for attendance. 5% for attendance. Write it down, please. 5% for attendance. There will be five percent for notes taken. Notes taken. I will mark your notes. Ototo, how are you, my son? Good. You know, come. Ototo, come. Call Apama for me. You know Apama, young people. Yes. Good. Abai. So number one, I say I will examine you with what. 5% yes, attendance. So someone like Tarina now that has attended virtually all my classes, that can be just the five mark. And this is my daughter. What's your name? Blessing. Blessing. She has also been very <laughs> faithful in coming to class. Most of you are trying. Then I'll give you 5% for notes. So you are going to take all these recordings 
And for every subject I have taught, I want to see notes. Is that okay? Yes. For writing is written. Number three, five percent for presentation, class presentation. I've already given three people uh, topics. I will give the rest of you. My daughter, what is your name? I will give you something. Are you hearing? Yes. Uh -huh. Don't feel neglected. So I will give you people five percent for class presentations. So that is fifteen percent. The remaining fifteen percent. I will determine whether it will be by test or by a CA, a term paper. Is that okay? Yes, yes ma'am. I, I should give you that before you go for Christmas. So that when you come January, you should submit. Any, is that okay, Dara? Yes. Are you sure? You have another suggestion? It's okay then. So please, these recordings I'm giving, everybody should take them and ensure that you, sorry my daughter, you make your notes because I will take those notes in a good book. Madam, let me see that thing. Uh, no, not that kind of thing. No. In a notebook. Are you sure? Bring it, let me see. Apama, your problem has been solved. Thanks, sir. It has been affected online. Go and confirm. Yes, sir. And let me know. Thanks, sir. Bless you. Oh, this is a note. It's okay, Dara. Dara, it's okay. This is your petroleum law note. Yes, sir. I say you look like somebody who knows where you are going to. I, I, I do not know, but I just know. I know what I'm saying. Try, eh? Can we continue? So first of all, the condition, just know them. The reservoir must have extended beyond the boundaries of the license or lease into an area to which another license or lease relates. Three, in respect of which a different person is licensee or leasee. And number four, at least one of them must have made a commercial discovery. So let me look up, look up at me. If we give you, we give Tarila OML225 and OML228, both of them belong to him. But they are different concessions. If there's this straddling of these two, there will not be need for JD joint development because both of them are his concessions. I don't know if you understand. You only use the unitization when it belongs to two different people. Not just two reservoirs, not just two concessions. So first there must be two concessions, secondly there must be two different work people. I don't even understand. Is it clear? Yes. Good. It's also possible that the reservoir that was given to Dara. Hey, that's pen. Okay. It's also possible that uh, this thing will keep it here permanently. Okay. Oh, please, let the boy not steal. Okay, so now this is Dara's concession, OML224. This is the reservoir, but it extends to here. But this area has not been given to any other company. Are you with me? Yes. What will happen? Because this first scenario I gave you is that. This area is OMM 227, given to Chevron. So Chevron and Shell are entering into this agreement. But here, this there's oil here. It extends beyond your boundary area. But here has not been given to anybody. What will happen? Are you with me? Have you so I will, I will, I will give you the answer. Let's just continue. Okay, so after receiving the notification from the companies that Oga and uh, this uh, my concession is straddling into this other person's concession. The commission will direct that the applicable licensee or leasee should enter into a unit agreement to develop the reservoir, and uh, this should be not less than within a period of not less than two years for them to come up with the agreement. So they have up to two years to negotiate, and then uh, if it's, if it is convinced that everything is okay, it will approve the agreement. It will approve the agreement which shall be based on the terms agreed by the parties, must conform again with good international petroleum industry practice, and must contain terms and conditions required by the Commission in a regulation. Can I continue, please? The agreement must be based on reliable technical, operational, and economic considerations. Reliable technical, operational, and economic considerations. It must identify the proposed operator of the units 
and provide technical information regarding the reservoir on matters such as structure mapping, net pay, and other engineering, and then blah, blah, blah. Again, if the parties fail to come up with this agreement, as it was under the Petroleum Act regime, what will the Commission do? It will now bring out its own agreement. Are you with me? Yes. It will impose a fair, it will impose fair and equitable terms and conditions of a unit agreement and the parties will be required to comply with them. Now the question I was asking, if your concession extends, if the reservoir extends beyond your concession area to a place that has not been granted from that oil company, what do you do? You go to the commission and say, okay, you gave me five plots of land and I discovered that this my reservoir has extended beyond the boundary you gave to me. Are you with me? Are you with me? Yes, sir. So I want you to extend my uh, concession area. So that is the matter you can go to. Are you with me? Extend the boundary of my concession. So the commission can now say, okay, we are extending the boundary of your concession from uh, if it was 10 plots. Please, I'm in a class, leave the class. We are having a lecture. Don't. That is not right. Arrange yourself well. And this is your first students. Please tell them when I start teaching, nobody should come to collect bag and then book and all that is all in this thing. Yes. Good. So let me just read what you have here. Section 80, sub section 7. The commission may extend the boundaries of the license or lease to include the entire petroleum reservoir within such license or lease, provided that the license or lease, the leasee, submits a field development plan that includes the additional adjacent area which is acceptable to the commission. That is the first thing it may do. Number two, please listen. Number two, it may conduct a bid round for the adjacent area in accordance with its own and licensing rounds. I don't know if you have seen the two options. What is option one, Grace? What is option one, Grace? What is option one, uh, that's my daughter, your name again? Blessing. So please, listen. This area has not been given to any oil company. This area belongs to Shell. There's petroleum here. There's petroleum here. I said two options exist. When you go to the commission, the commission can now extend this concession to cover here. Are you with me? Yes. Number two, the commission can auction this place. Are you with me? They can now award here as an oil block from that company. That company and this company will now have to enter into unitization agreements. Yes, so there are two types of extensions you need to know. One, let me explain again. Um, why is this guy not writing for you? Take the top one. And will you take your time? Yes, we, we just go on. So, two options we have here. Number one option is uh, we are extending your boundary. So, there are two extensions I want you to know. Number one, we can extend your boundary. Or number two, we can also extend your, the duration, your time. Are you with me? Yes. Yeah, so, for example, now we are giving two, we are giving this company this uh, concession, this part, and this area belongs to another company. But this man's OML is to last for 40 years, no, 20 years, and it is expiring when this arrangement has not yet been fully completed. My son, are you with me? The, you have, an OML has a maximum period of 20 years, is that not so? Yes, yes so you entered into uh, this JDZ in 2018, and your OML is expiring in 2020, and the way the, the, way the agreement has gone to fully develop this concession, this uh, reservoir, you need around seven years. You can go back to the commission, which now has the right to add seven years to your 20 years. That's what I'm saying. Are you with me? Yes. So, a unit agreement, uh, a unitized field, or a unitized reservoir, 
can be, the duration can be ex extended. So when a large reservoir can continue in production after the expiration of one or more licenses or leases relating to it, the commission may grant an extension of the term of the license or an area. So basically, that is what I really, really have um, for you to know about the initialization. Are there questions? Sir. Yes, my dear. I think we should get this last part here explaining about um, the two options involved with the extension of Can somebody help with my daughter? The scope, the boundary. You could extend the boundary, Grace. You could extend the time. You extend the boundary where the other. The overlapping side has not been granted to any other company. You understand? So you come and say, you go to the commission and say, you gave me five plots, but it in, the, my, the reservoir extends beyond my five plots. The commission will say, no problem. We are adding half plot to your five plots to cover that reservoir. That's the first extension. The second extension is where you have been granted, you have entered into this agreement with another company to develop a unitized reservoir. But while production is continuing, your own license is expiring, or your lease, which we know for the license, maximum of six years for onshore shallow waters. But this thing can continue for the next five years. So the commission now has the right to say, okay, for purpose of this uh, unitized reservoir, we are adding three more years based on the field development plan and um, the estimations contained in the initialization agreement. I don't know if you understand. Thank you, sir. Yes, my dear. Let me hear you. Yes, my son. So I will see these parts now. What are those two countries? Good. If it is two countries, then they will have to use international law to regulate it. Here is not the commission. The commission does not have any power there. Here is now two presidents are speaking. Is that not so? Ministers of Petroleum, they are meeting, they are negotiating, they are discussing, and eventually they will enter into what they call a more bilateral treaty. If it's three countries, then they will enter into a multilateral treaty. Are you with me? These three or four countries will now agree that this concession should be developed as a unitized and joint development zone. Then we we'll all take our share of profits and all that. That is why I told them to look. My son, I said, should look at what again? Uh -huh. That's why I said this my son should look at such things. Yes, my dear. The last question is no one. Extension of time. He said it's not the extension of time. He said it's when an extra time of duration will come to a company when there is a show of this. When? Something about. I don't know how to place it in the right words. Thank you, my brother. Fine. He said the duration of time will be extended. Yes, yeah, so two countries have entered into an agreement. Are you with me? Remember that before, one of them has made a commercial discovery. They have submitted a field development plan and a initialization agreement. And they plan to say, we are using the next seven years to develop this concession. But this OGA that is entering into this agreement, its own concession is expanding next year. Now it's entering into an agreement for seven years. What do we do if we don't extend is duration, then we are frustrated in. So you can go back to the commission and table these facts before it. And if the commission is convinced that there is a need for extension, then it will extend its duration. So yes, that's, sir. yes, my dear. That is the extension of time is only agreement. No, there are extensions. Uh, generally, leases can be extended. Now, you know, the the OML can. Like, as to this. Yes, yes. In this case, it's when there's already an agreement. When there's already an agreement. Yes. Not when it's on its own. Just and even if it is on its own, they can still extend. 
Do you understand? If it's on its own and the commission is of the view that there's need for extension, it can extend. Yes, my son. It can be used to extend the time and also the boundary. Yes, it's possible. It's possible. Yes, got it. The, when they are extending it, can we be for the whole concession or just that? Very good question from an intelligent man. That I am not sure. Let's look at section 80. I thought about it as well. Somebody should read section 18 if you are there. That should be sub section 4. Section 18. Yes, my dear. Subsection 4. Mm -hmm. No, sorry, verse sub seven. Seven. Let a development reservoir extend beyond the boundaries of the license or lease into an adjacent area, which is not covered by the license or lease. The commission may a extend the boundaries of the license or lease into to include the entire petroleum reservoir within. Okay, go to eight. Go to eight. So you have explained. My son, you have the answer now. Just the retired field. You cannot use that as a basis to extend your whole uh, succession. Okay. So I think basically that is what I want you guys to know. There are some other aspects of unitization which uh, I may not want to bother you for now. Uh, which I may not want to bother you for now. <laughs> Sorry, my dear. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there have been some issues with regard to unitization. Let me just run through some of them. Uh, particularly before the BIA correct interpretation of Regulation 48. Recognizing unitization of Australian and non-Australian reservoirs, determining single and combined provisional track participation for oil and gas development, economic considerations, contractual disputes relating to fiscal terms, redetermination, reference dates, appointment of a unit operator, funding, divestment, political issues. These are some of the challenges and, uh, and all that. Then there is also something you might need to know what they call redetermination of a of a unitization agreement. Redetermination, not determination, but redetermination. So from time to time the parties may decide to come and uh, we have entered into an agreement, but the agreement may provide for us to come back and still uh, discuss and still see how we can uh, renegotiate. Are you with me? Renegotiate the agreement and all that. I think I should leave that for another time. Is that okay? Yes. Uh, I should leave that for another time, but I'll also talk about it. So come and save this. Let's enter into the We'll save it and start again. But I want to look at uh, the legal regime for frontier fields. We must end this thing today. But next week, I want us to look at uh, ownership theories with respect to petroleum, 